Wow, what a great episode. That was fantastic. Let's get to this moderated Q&A. <laughs> I was like, am I upside down? <laughs> Can you see me upside down? No. No, you're good. <laughs> you're good to start, Jared. All right. Well, hi, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to SCAD TV Fest. For 10 years now, SCAD TV Fest has brought the best of television and the artists behind it to an international audience of students, fans, and aficionados. I am Entertainment Weekly Senior Editor Jared Hall, and joining me today are three stars of the new Peacock series, Bel Air. Please welcome Ali Sholaton, who plays Carlton Banks, Akira Akbar, who plays Ashley Banks, and Simone Joy Jones, who plays Lisa. Hello to all of you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I want to let everyone know to uh, be sure to stick around following this discussion we are having right now for an audience Q&A. So uh, first of all, to all of you, congrats on the show. I know a lot of people have been so excited for this. It is on the air now, I think, four episodes on at this point. Um, I, I want to ask each of you first what your audition process was like for this. Ollie, maybe we'll start with you here. Yeah, my audition process i had actually like two years ago when the trailer had gone viral and i found out that mm -hmm. will was uh turning into a thing i had emailed my manager and i was like yo you know this bel-air thing is coming you know i'd love to get seen for it in some way like you know i'll, mm -hmm. I'll be a waiter in the back like i'll really you know <laughs> like i don't care what part i am i just want to be a part of it mm -hmm. and you know obviously two years later i get this audition for carlton and i was like uh what um and it was really cool because in it, they were so specific and they were like, you know, this is not the sitcom. Do not go for Alfonso's performance. Like, do your own thing. And mm. um, it was cool. You know, I, I sent in that uh, audition tape and then two or three weeks later, I get a call again. that's like, hey, we'd love to give you another callback. I did the callback. Then they tested me. Then I did 8,000 chemistry reads. Um, and I'd say the mm. whole process took what a month i don't know it, it took it took a second but it was it was a very wild crazy <laughs> journey uh, it sounds like it and and the important thing there to note uh, making it your own you didn't have to do the dance anything like that that's for another show another time that is because i remember as as they kept testing me you know because because the way a network test works i'm sure everyone knows but just in case everyone does it the way a network tests uh works is basically the network's like, yo, we really like you. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, essentially give you an offer in that we're going to give you an offer. And then we're going to give a bunch of people an offer for the role. We're going to take your tapes, you know, show it to the network execs and whoever they like the most, they will exercise that offer. And so I remember when they had been testing, I was like, so they essentially they had given the test, they had I believe it was five days to exercise the option. And in those five days, I had a bunch of chemistry reads. And I was like, at no point had they asked me to do the Carlton. And I can do a really, really mean Carlton. Like, I know oh. I can do the Carlton. And they never asked me to do it. So <laughs> I think well, I was like, okay, I mean, this is a different, I understand. Got it. Yeah. Save it for the Instagram, though. You can show it up there. Um, yeah. Simone, how about for you? For me, I graduated college in May in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And so uh, I had an audition, you know, virtually, you know, sending a tape. Um, and then it was a director's meeting and I was like, okay, great. And then I, I hate when you get excited for a role as an actor because you get, you, get, you know, it's a bunch of no's, it's a bunch mm -hmm. of of falling in love with different projects. And then, you know, we did that one and they were like, hey, our can we meet in Philly? And I was like, yeah. So I drove five hours, five and a half hours um, to Philly for a meeting at, oh my gosh. So, you know, I, there was, we were supposed to meet in the lobby of a hotel. And I was like, okay, great. I'll stay in that hotel. And then I'll walk down the stairs and they'll be like, oh, like that's me. <laughs> right? Like I had this whole gaudy moment planned. And it turns out I was at this, the hotel franchise but i was 15 minutes away so i was like oh. like down here like sitting like posed you know what i mean and my manager is like hey um they're wondering where you're at and i'm like 
um, I'm here, what are you talking about? Like my eyes starting to twitch. And then like, oh. and then they're like, oh, it's this location. So I was like, okay, do I drop down and cry or do I get an Uber and I ran? So I got an Uber and you know, and I run down like the Philly blocks. And of course, like the perfect picture that I thought that they were gonna meet, there was like, no, my hair was this big and I was sweating and I was like, hey, hey. Oh. <laughs> But after that, oh. super smooth sailing because it was just with Morgan and PJ, the showrunners and the director, um, Morgan Cooper. And I really just got a taste of their vision. And it was just so cool to really understand what this new project was going to be. And I was just like, you know what? I don't know if you're going to consider me, but I wish you the best of luck because what you're doing with it sounds incredible. So that's what it was like for me. Yeah. Well, that running and the five and a half hour drive sounds like it was worth it. Worth um, it. Akira, how was... Yeah, How, what was your audition process? Again? Um, my audition process was not as like crazy as some folks. I mine was like all online. Um, I had my audition, and then I think the next day I had my call back, and then I think the next week I got like a <laughs> I got a I didn't like, know this. session or whatever, and then I think a couple days after that I. I was like waiting and waiting and I was like, oh, I got this. I got this. And then I started thinking, I was like, you know what? I haven't heard anything. Maybe I'm going to just forget about it. <laughs> and then after I forgot about it, a couple days later, I got the call and my manager yeah. was like, how would you feel to be Ashley Bakes? I was like, you're joking. Like, this is not serious. <laughs> because my mom, she picked me up from school and told me to call my manager. And I was like, okay. I thought I was in trouble or something. <laughs> so oh, <laughs> so when I called her. I was so excited. <laughs> yeah, pleasant phone call. That's a good one to make for sure. Um, yeah. I want to touch on something that um, Ollie, you you kind of mentioned. You know, these um, these characters are are such iconic characters on an iconic show. Um, but in this version, of course, being a much more dramatic depiction of uh, the events of everything that we saw happen in Bel Air. Um, I'm curious what the discussions were like between all of you and uh, the producers and the directing team about how to honor what Alfonso Rivero and Tatiana Ali and Nia Long had done, but also make it your own. You know, I, I think there's this thing in acting the, it's this concept, which is like, you do all of the work, you know, you, you read the script, you memorize your lines, you do all the uh, table work, and then you forget about it and just trust that it'll still be there you know, when you're, when you're performing. And I think that's mm -hmm. the same way we all approach this show in that we've all seen the original. We all know mm -hmm. what those performances are. And so at least for me, you know, I don't want to speak for um, Simone or, or Akira, but like my journey was an exercise and I know what that is. So I just need to work on forgetting it. And I know that it'll still be there. I know that, you know, the essence of that character will mm -hmm. continue in my performance, but I really worked on approaching the text just as it was and as what I saw on the page. And so, you know, because because the show itself, like the premise itself already falls in the legacy of that original show. So I, I really just think that by us giving ourselves the freedom to bring ourselves to the roles that, you know, I, I, I think that the, the following in its footsteps was inherent already, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I absolutely. agree with that. I mean, like, I still wanted to have a little bit of the original Ashley. Um, I wanted to bring the, a little bit of the original Ashley to screen, but also have my own spin because I know the drama makes it totally different. Like now we're dealing with real life scenes and a lot of the issues are not the same as they were in the original. So, you know, I kind of wanted to make, I well, not kind of, I wanted to make Ashley more relatable to this new generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ollie, you mentioned, you know, the, oh, sorry, were you going to say something that's not, didn't mean to cut you off? I was just speaking to that, it was just the essence of everything. Like, yeah. just now we get to just, once you do the work, and then you get to play, and then because we grew up on it, like I grew up on it, I already, it already lives in me, you know, what, what mm -hmm. character feels like, so in that way, I didn't even have to try. That's why I went. Yeah, it's complete sense. Um, Ollie, talking about, you know, what's, on the page. Uh, I don't know what I was specifically expecting of Carlton in this version of the show, but man, he is, um, he's hes quite the antagonist here. I was not expecting that. I mean, of course, you know, they butted heads a little bit, uh, you know, in the beginning on the, on the sitcom, but um, 
what a I'm yeah, what a jerk. I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> but, but I feel like we're gonna have a redeeming moment at some point, which of course you don't have to give away if it does or doesn't happen. But uh, I mean, just seeing that must have been like, oh, can't wait to sink my teeth into this. That's it's literally exactly that. I remember I had seen the audition sides and I and I got the audition sides and I was like okay cool and I you know approached it as it was on the paper and then it was the callback it was the callback sides Akira close your ears it was the callback sides I was like Carlton does a bump of coke and then continues to see it and I was like and I was like oh my <laughs> like what is who yeah. is this um but nah mm-hmm. like it, it made me so excited because I was just like yo I am I'm so interested in sinking my teeth in this very complex character. Cause mm-hmm. I think what's just so beautiful about Carlton's journey is that in the original, we play so much of his struggles for laughs. It's just in the original, it's just, uh, we, we understand and we take it at face value of you have this black kid that doesn't know how to act black and ah, ha, ha, that's mm-hmm. funny. But when you really, really look at it, that's so damaging to a young 16 year old kid's psyche. And I was just really, really interested in exploring how a kid can grow through that Mm -hmm. um and so i don't know carlton has become a a wonderful little brother to me i'm so protective over that kid (laughs) and so i i I think the journey he goes on this season is just beautiful don't get me wrong right now he's not in his best light but (laughs) i (laughs) i hope that the rest of the world falls in love with him in the same way like i have gotten the chance to and i i think that they will Mm -hmm. yeah um (laughs) Yeah, yeah, indeed. Simone, in terms of Lisa, um, uh, sorry, I'm going to say something that might spoil this for folks if they haven't watched it yet, but we find out that she is the daughter of a police officer, and that very much plays into what is going on with uh, Phil Banks' run for um, uh, district attorney. Uh, Tell me about diving into that kind of dynamic and that theme that you guys are are getting to really explore here. Yeah, it's... Oh, it's a wild dynamic because Lisa is being pulled between a lot of different worlds and especially as being like a young black kid growing up and in a movement right now where we are extremely critical as we should be of our justice system and how that affects us. I mean, she's 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 caught between a, in a hard place. You know, she's, you know, trying not to be in love at this point, but also she has she's confused because the powers that be are pulling, but also at, at this point, she's unaware. At this point, she's unaware. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so true. And, you know, you got two guys on either side of her. And she's like, I know. hmm. I know. Them, I- keeping them away <laughs> is when... <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. Like, we need to check on these. Yeah. Like, there's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to be part of that trouble. Akira, um, in terms of Ashley's journey so far, I I feel like I'm picking up on um, some uh, small hints about things uh, that we might be learning very soon about Ashley. What can you say about that? What do you want to say? Um, I mean, I don't want to give it away. (laughs) I don't want to give a lot away, but I'm just excited for next episode. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to spoil anything, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people picked up on what's going on with Ashley. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. Look, looking looking around the room for a very specific friend, where is this person? If anyone's yeah. seen that scene, I My think that will be an in She was like, I mean, what's, like, right. what's going on with Ashley? <laughs> like, she's like, she's really curious about where her friend is. I mean, mm-hmm. she's all the way she was looking at her. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> curious being the key word i think we should stay there right mm-hmm. yeah there we go okay um i gotta ask each of you you know morgan cooper you, you mentioned him um he made that trailer uh, a few years ago about what fresh print could look like if it was set modern day and it was uh you know a, a dramatic take on that story that went viral will smith saw it they talk morgan's now an e here i don't know what kind of conversations you guys have uh specifically had with him or heard him talk about but i I, i'm sure this is all beyond his wildest dreams but my bigger point here is that this feels like a real lesson in the power of acting on your ideas he had an idea he went and made something and here it is i think that's kind of a great lesson not just for people in this industry but in general see morgan Morgan has become just like a big brother to all of us. Yeah. And 
he he just he and he's so willing to be that like every week of filming at least once a week he will call or text me and be like yo ali how's your spirit um and i just know in an interview he said this one thing he said that uh imperfect action is better than perfect inaction and i think that encapsulates mm. all of you know morgan cooper's approach to this art form in that mm. You know, and, and the biggest thing that I've learned and like I've known it, but like I've learned is just like go out and make your stuff, mm -hmm. like make whatever you have on your mind, make it because that's the only way that it'll get realized as a real thing. And it, it is crazy that, yeah, this all started because he self-funded this wacky idea that he had. And now he's an executive producer on this incredible TV show. Like that's wild to think about. Mm -hmm. Um, I, well, uh, you're talking Ollie, and I'll let you jump in here too as well. Simone, Ollie, you went to uh, UCLA School of Theater, Film, and TV. Simone, you're a grad of Carnegie Mellon School of Drama. What was uh, like the most valuable thing that you learned there that you have applied to your work post college? Ooh. Come on, Ma, I'll let you take it. <laughs> like that's a really good question. Um, okay. And to this process specifically, it's longevity. I learned a lot mm. from CMU about taking care of yourself and really like running a marathon and rather than like sprinting and hurting yourself and it's taking time and to take care of yourself through the process, but also to like be strong enough in your mind, mar I was trying to say heart and mind, but it's been at the same time, in your heart and your mind to do like great work and the show because the lighting the cinematography the writing the acting is so good you want to bring your all to it to make it what it is and so when you have that longevity you get a, a beautiful product that you're proud of so i'm really grateful for seeing you for that the coolest thing about ucla's program for me was that it was a ba which again, I know a lot of people in this room probably know the difference, but uh, Bachelor of Arts versus Bachelor of Fine Arts. Uh, with a BA, it's like a more general approach to education. With a Bachelor of Fine Arts, it's more specific and different, you know, things work for different people. But I really loved the BA just because it focused on uh, interdisciplinary education. And so I, I like that I, like at UCLA, I discovered a love for music making and music production. And, you know, it's just like no knowledge is lost always. It's, and you can always take, you know, a lesson that you've learned from your exploration of this art form and bring it to this other art form. Uh, and so that's, that was, I love that about UCLA. I just kind of got to try all these different things and fall in love with certain elements of, of each different art form and bring each thing to my work as an actor. Yeah, totally. Um, Akira, you uh, have played young Monica Rambeau and Captain Marvel and young Beth on This Is Us. I love both of those. Congrats on um, those uh, those roles. Uh, but I'm curious, what did what, what was your big takeaway from those experiences on a huge Marvel project on a very popular TV series? Um, I would say, <laughs> I have to think on that. Um, my biggest takeaway is probably for Marvel, it would probably be stay humble. I mean, that's my biggest takeaway for a lot of projects. Like, I just feel like when people get into the field of like bigger projects, they tend to like stop acting, like, you know, stop acting like so, not so nice, but I mean, so like yeah friendly with people yeah i mean like i still go to school and stuff and i don't like people knowing that i do acting and stuff because i like to separate those things acting mm -hmm. and regular life i mean people find out anyways but i'm not the one to go tell people oh yeah i i'm in this i'm in that so that's probably the biggest takeaway to say humble yeah I totally respect that and know exactly what you mean. Um, for uh, Akira and Ali, I'm really curious about creating this, uh, you know, the, the dynamic within the Banks family, because as we've mentioned, it's a very different kind of Banks family we're seeing at play here. So did you guys do anything in terms of, uh, you know, off screen, in terms of family, you know, to kind of create that? Or has that all really been on the page for you? It's sort of this really cool combination of both. And um I think what's been so magical, 
cool about this cast is from the moment we all met each other, we just all clicked. I think that uh, Vicky Thomas, our casting director, and Morgan Cooper, like, I don't know how, but they assembled a group of people that just gelled together so well. And actually in the pilot, in the pilot, that uh, scene at the house, like the the party at the house, that's the first Mm -hmm. time the family met each other, really. Um, And it's crazy to look at that now because I look at that, I'm like, yo, we look like we've known each other for years. And I and I look at some of the behind the scenes stuff and like, AK, you and I are just like standing there joking around as if we've known each other for years. Um, I, but I also, know, like... and in addition to that, we all do hang out way too much um, <laughs> off of set. We went to, I think it was like the first or second week, we all went to Halloween Horror Nights uh, Universal. Yeah. So like we... We do, we're very- That will bond you really quickly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, especially when you're scared. Oh my God. I remember your birthday, oh, girl. Oh. We, we took so a Kira scared, for her like, birthday yeah. and she was so freaked out. Oh my God. The way they had me, star, like she was running. Like I was running. We were all, they were like, I was in the middle of the circle and they all form, formed a circle around me. And we had to try to get out that way, but they got me somehow, <laughs> and I was too scared. Never no, going again. Honestly, they were terrifying. They were terrifying. They had chainsaws and everything. I was like, girl, I don't even blame Fake you. Fake chainsaws. They that. weren't real. It took us 40 minutes to like, get out of there. <laughs> yes. Listen, I've been through it. I know how you feel. I Part of it, I was on the floor crawling. So I understand. <laughs> I get I get, I get, get the whole thing. I don't know why I torture myself with going in them. Uh, but anyway, um, I, I, we're going to be getting to uh, some student questions here. And actually, there's one here that uh, I had a similar question. I'll go ahead and ask it. Maddie is uh, wondering uh, to, you know, what extent was Will's involvement? Did you guys meet him? What kind of conversations did you have? Will, of course, being for everyone who may not know Will Smith. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, w- Willard. Um, oh, you know, Willard. he's the... He, he, Willard. His, you know, his name's Willard. Anyway, like, as the EP, he's he's involved in just, like, all levels of it. You know, he's approving scripts. I learned that he approved each of our casting, you know, like, individually. Yeah. Um, I, I remember the day of our camera test, actually. Akira, you weren't here on this day, but this was, like, before we started filming, on the day of our camera test, I remember the showrunners sat us down and they were like, hey, you know, Will Smith, he's not able to be here today, but like he wants you guys to know that the Smith family is at your disposal for just anything you need because this experience is going to get crazy and fun and wild. Mm. Um, so like he's just been really, really giving and generous throughout the whole process. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's an honor. Like, <laughs> it's an honor. Like, <laughs> when I think about it, it's kind of like, what? Because someone who I've literally grown up watching and admired, and he's been on almost every vision board that I've created, you know, of where I want for myself. Um, so I, I, I am so proud and honored to, to be here. Yeah, I mean, just knowing that he's, like, we're in a project with his name on it, that's yeah. Insane. And like, he's very we're careful. attached to him now, basically. Yeah. Um, okay, Simone, you mentioned vision boards, and uh, several people have talked to me about these, and I keep thinking, like, should I be doing one of these? And everyone's like, yes, I've done them, and all of these things have manifested yeah. in my life that I really, because I, I guess, what is it? Is it about putting the time and energy into really, like, sitting down and saying, this is what I want for my life, and because because you're doing it, it's, it's so much more, like, prevalent and presence in the way you maneuver life? That's like, you hit the nail on the head. Also like, oh, you, all right. okay. them, you can make them in, dir- in various ways. You know, it doesn't have to be like super elaborate, but I find when I take time and I really like, okay, what do I want for my life? You know, what direction? So really when you think about it and you make your intention, you also start to just look for that in your life or, or that just mm-hmm. starts to gravitate towards you. Or you start to gravitate towards projects like, oh yeah, I do want that. And, and then they kind of just fall into place and, you know, and it, like magic in a way but i feel like life is magic you know what i mean like i feel like life is magic because mm-hmm. life is cool like that i'm gonna get it really quick it's right here <laughs> oh nice yeah it's uh, but you know it's hearing that it reminds me of obviously what filmmakers do when they're storyboarding you kind of feel I, in this way you're kind of storyboarding these uh you know hopes and and dreams for your life i'm i, I love that you're going to share this with us this is really cool okay. see this is my newest one 
And it, that one to me is like a work of art, but that's really cool because there's so many different things. Right, um, well, what I made was like on a Google Drive because I was like, you know what, 2020 took the energy out of me. <laughs> and I, Simone, I think I'm gonna have to come over and do a vision board at your house. Yes, Jabari made his in my house. Really? I, yeah, I, I don't know if I can make it, but you know what I mean. I also met Dan Blue at the premiere, which is crazy. See, that is true. So I want to work with them and well, you know, just all the people who have just met. I met Willow at the premiere as well, so it's just like, wow, this is so cool. Words and yeah, words and just but that's that's people. right. All right, I heard enough people talk about them at this point that I'm just going to do it. You convinced me. Um, uh, even you outside of acting, you have your interest in music and dance. Uh, I, I'm curious, did any of that play any role at all in getting these jobs for you? Did that like come up at, at any point? You know what? No. <laughs> Not in the process, and it's crazy because we're all very musical people, and you know, all we're, we're all dancers, we're all movers, and we all t tell, we all share music and storytelling, you know. And honestly, in the audition, I was like, I'm begging you, like, make me sing. I'm like, <laughs> my dream, like, whatever. <laughs> I'll get in there. <laughs> they were like, oh, can you freestyle? I said, no. <laughs> but I, <laughs> give me a song. But it's crazy. So it's it's nice that we all got to really. Well, for me personally, dive into it and then like find these moments that are musical in the show. Like Jabari just starts playing piano. Nobody knew that he could do that. You know, like my sh my song Ball Out um, on my um, EP Divine Mistakes is in episode six, you know, just moving with the storyline. And I was just like, it's so cool that we get to have pieces of ourselves um, that are not forced in the story. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, I'm going to turn uh, our attention now to uh, the rest of the questions that are coming in from uh, the SCAD students. This one is from Jen. What was or has been your uh, favorite part about taking an iconic established character and putting your own spin on it? So we've talked about doing it, but what's been your favorite part of that? Hmm. I mean, I, I think, fun, and I know that this totally shouldn't, I think the reception has been very interesting to me um, because it's it's been very strong. I've had a lot of people that are either like, this totally makes sense, I love it, or I hate this, what have you done to call it? Um, <laughs> which, which, you know, I, I just like, I don't know, I think it's fascinating. I, I think that, you know, good art, great art makes you feel strongly and so that that has been my favorite part just to kind of and also you know fan theories have popped up here and there people are like you know questioning certain things and so just like that that sort of um audience feedback has been very fascinating and interesting for we me. were talking but, about that earlier like a lot of the theories i don't know we were just thinking about theories today we were like dang that that actually happened like because i have had this long-standing this theory about the part, I don't want to spoil it, but like mm -hmm. I've had this theory forever. And then uh, someone tweeted it to me today. They're like, oh, I think blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wait, I thought that too. And then Morgan actually confirmed it, that it is real, so. Oh, no, is that something we will see kind of come to fruition on the show? Well, okay, it happens in the pilot, which should we just assume that oh. everyone's seen the pilot by this point? Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so my, so if you notice at, at the party, um, Will and Lisa are dancing on the platform, and from every single shot, all they're doing is dancing and talking. But in one shot, from Carlton's point of view, they kiss. And then later on, even in episode two, it's like we like yeah. we were just talking. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, just I've had, and yeah, I I've had this like... theory. I've had this theory that Carlton, like that they didn't actually kiss. Carlton only saw them kiss because you know the drugs, and he's mm -hmm. upset and blah blah blah. blah. And someone else was like, yeah, I don't know. Someone mentioned it. And I, and I was just, I just responded. I was like, yeah, no, this has been my theory. And then Morgan actually confirmed it. He was like, yeah, no, that was very intentional in the point of view switch. They don't actually kiss in reality, which I thought was brilliant. Yeah, I never mm. really, I never really thought about that until you brought it up. And I was like, wait, that is true. Mm. All right. So, so point being, fans should keep sharing their theories because some of this stuff might be right. Morgan might be listening and paying attention. All mm -hmm. right. All right. Good to know. And, and by the way, do do either of you have anything you want to say about the, like favorite part of of taking on these iconic characters and show? Totally you said fine. My if favorite not. part about what? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, your favorite part. Your favorite part of being, uh, you know, part of part of this and and playing Ashley. I mean, it's just iconic. You know, just playing Ashley in 
making her kind of my own. Mm. I, that's amazing. <laughs> Have any of you met so far Alfonso or Nia or Tatiana or, or heard from them? I met Tatiana Lee. I met Tatiana too. <laughs> She's amazing. She was, yes, she was amazing. And I, I say this a lot, but I just relives in my brain like every day is when she told me, she was like, I had the role of Ashley. Now I'm passing her down to you. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh my goodness. I was like, that, that torch. is not, this is not real life. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. That's really cool. Um, all right. Next question from Ali. Uh, do, you, uh, do you guys have any memories of watching the original show before you got these roles? How much did you take from the interpretations of the characters? Um, and, and actually, did you get to have any say in where these characters are going? Hmm, I... <laughs> um... and I immediately forgot the question as, as soon as I was going to speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so I, or AK, you want to take it? You can take it. You can take it. Okay. I, so I didn't, um, it, I grew up in Nigeria, so I never actually got the chance to, I was born in the States, but I lived in Nigeria until I was 10. Um, so I never got the chance to actually, and also the show went off air two years before I was born, mm. but I never watched the show in order. And so I caught mm. episodes here and there. Um, and, and I, I do have distinct memories of specific moments but it it's just like it's so funny because now that I've gotten the show, I've gotten to sort of go back and watch it actually in order and pick up on the little things that like did you know every time Jazz wears that shirt and he's about to get thrown out? That's hilarious. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like I didn't catch that as a kid because I only watched episodes in bits and pieces. And um no, it, it has actually been really, really cool because the the production team and the writing team, there's so much trust involved in everything that like, yeah, there, there are certain times when we'll be doing a scene and, you know, like it, it'll be me, the director and the writer and TJ Rashid. It would be like, do you think Carlton would blah, blah, blah? And I'd be like, no, like that doesn't, I don't know, that just doesn't work. Or I'd be like, oh yeah, no, totally. Um, and it's really, really great how much trust and, and ownership they give us over these characters, mm -hmm. you know? Because at the end of the day, we know them as well, if not better than, you know, anyone else in that room. And so it's it's been really great to be a part of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to watch the reruns on Nick and Night. And I just mm -hmm. like, it just, it was the feeling of just being excited. And like, it was always just, it was so classic, you know, something that, you know, was before it wasn't, didn't come on right when we were, we were kids, but yeah. it was just like, it just, it proves how well done it is and how amazing it speaks to our culture that it still lives and it's still so fun to watch and you really like you really belly laugh you know there's no forcing it and so i just it's 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 an honor, it's an honor. yeah i feel like they kind of gave us the <laughs> Sorry. it was with, with, with lisa but i feel like Car carlton is similar in the way like we have a lot of like exposition you know, and like the story I've noticed. So like freedom with our characters and like just with the things that we say, we have to be very specific. So it's gonna be a conversation with the writer of like, okay, well, how are we gonna go about this? And I've had such amazing um, conversations and, with the writers and they're so easy to talk to and they're approachable and they um, are so flexible with that. Yes. I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. Kind of important though what you're saying there, Simone, is that don't be afraid to to talk to the writers. I mean, those are important conversations to have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andre uh, has a question. Well, first of all, saying he's been blown away by the cinematography on the show and wants to hear all about how that has kind of influenced, uh, you know, influenced what we're seeing happen. You know, so much of that, I think, starts, it goes back to Morgan friggin' Cooper. Because he, um, he, he was a cinematographer. And he's, like, part of that guerrilla filmmaking, you know, camp where it's, like, he's the cinematographer and the camera op and, you know, the director and the sound mixer. So, so he has such an intimate understanding of all parts of the film creation process that, you know, in setting the look for the show he's having direct conversations with, because we have two DPs and they switch off 
every uh, other episode. But, you know, he's he's having conversations with them as like, oh, that's what the look of the show is. That's what the look of the show is. Um, and, you know, he does this very cool thing where he short sights a lot in the show. And it's just this brilliant little touch that makes this TV show look like a movie. And you know he's he's not afraid to to go handheld. He'll he'll use the steady cam for so many of these shots w- that traditionally would just be locked off. And I think it is really really cool that you know Morgan sees other ways to tell stories. That it's not just oh here's you know I'm going to lock off the camera, have people in front of it, and have them talk. He's like, how can I use the camera movements and the 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 shot composition to tell a story in addition to that? And I think it's just really cool. Yeah, I got to agree. It's it's been uh, really enjoyable, not just to watch the story, but to physically watch the composition of the show in that way, too. Um, one of the questions coming in is uh, it really is kind of speaking to, you know, the nods to the original series. And, you know, when you watch, there's certainly a lot of things. It's like, oh, like that line, they lifted it right from the original, or even from the theme song. Um, in terms of like those Easter eggs, though, um, are, are there a lot of discussions when you guys were shooting like, OK, we're going to work this in, but uh, like that's how we can do it in like the most subtle way possible and see if people pick it up? Because some are very obvious, I think, but there's been some others. I'm like, wait, didn't did they do that on the original? I've like, you know, tried, you know, I've been Googling things to see. You think we should uh, move her? No. <laughs> oh, I think someone's unmuted, but anyway, uh, yeah. So, in terms of the Easter eggs on the show, how have there been things that you think we've missed? Simone, I feel like you would be able to speak more to this. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I don't know if there's any. I feel like so far they've been pretty obvious, but it's like if you're mm-hmm. If you have been a real fan, you know, and if, if you've watched them religiously and you comb through them, the writers do an amazing job of like weaving it in there. Like later, yeah. what's like the and and then it'll and some of them will be punchlines in the original, but then they'll actually be like a, a like a shift or like a beat. Mm-hmm. And here I'll be like, okay, I'm I'm, I'm like trying not to spoil them because I have examples, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> but but it's, it's great because even if you don't know the original, it feels like it feels organic and real. Mm. Mm. And I think for the most part, they they achieve that subtlety by not calling, at least in my experience in the scripts, they don't call too much attention to it. I, it's just kind of mm-hmm. a thing that happens. You know what I mean? It's not shoehorned in there in a way that's like, all right, and now here's the thing. It's very much like <laughs> boom, 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 beat, beat, beat that thing happens moving on. Mm-hmm. So it, it feels very, if you miss it, you miss it. But then you go back and you rewatch the episode and you're like, what? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then also <laughs> yeah. go back and watch the original. Because, like, and then you go, wait, 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 wait. And so I think that's really, really cool. Yeah, yeah that is cool. Um, last thing I kind of want to get to here, I don't think, I don't know if I missed any other student questions. I apologize if I did. But um, I, I'm just wondering if you can all kind of tease as much as you can without giving too much away where each of your characters are headed in this first season. AK, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie, don't do me like that. Okay. Um... <laughs> That's brother sister dynamic at work right there. <laughs> I, you know, without giving too much away, Ashley is just trying to figure herself out and <laughs> figure herself out in her surroundings kind of thing. You know, she's, st- she's trying to step out of the Bel Air bubble with being a normal teenager. Mm-hmm. And so I think we just see her grow a lot throughout the season. <laughs> Very well said. That's a great tease. <laughs> I think Lisa is, she starts to fight. <laughs> Just fight for herself. Like, you're finding yourself and then, like, fighting for uh, yourself. You know, we get to find, like, an inner uh, voice of strength, of of, of which way she's going to go um, um, in her life. And especially when she has a bunch of forces pulling her, you know, it's like, what path is she going to take? Because that's going to really affect, or really affect, um, the lives that she's around. So she, she, is gonna go through it for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Carlton is on a journey of coming to terms with his blackness. And, uh, mm-hmm. 
and 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 finding his own voice sort of independent of his father's expectations of himself um mm. and just just finding healthier ways to to deal with his um mental illness and then deal with his uh with his anxiety but um like i said you know i i grown very protective over him so like mm-hmm. You know, I, I think it's very easy to be like, oh, Carlton's mean. I don't think he's mean. I think he's he's surviving. And that's mm-hmm. and I, I think he finds better ways to survive throughout the season. Hmm. I was thinking I'm very happy to hear like, that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. No, go ahead. I was Sorry. thinking like I think people are hating on Carlton because they're comparing him to the old Carlton. Mm. You can't yeah. do that. Although, like, he's kind of right. He's a little bit hateable, but I mean, like, <laughs> people are so going to be extreme. All I'm saying was they were kissing on a platform in the middle of the party. <laughs> what do you oh, expect? Yeah, you to have do? to wait. Like, mm. That was literally the middle of the party. I invited him to this function. Like, Will, what is you doing? <laughs> no, I saw some, I saw a tweet that was like, oh, I'm three minutes in and I hate Carlton. I was like, because you're three minutes in. <laughs> that's right <laughs> only three yeah. minutes three minutes <laughs> they're still but in also, the first three minutes <laughs> but, yeah, but, also, but, also, but also like i am i am a firm believer and i think that is the journey you know what i'm saying like yeah. you have to go on the full journey with him and that yeah. sure you know like if you took a snapshot of well akira it doesn't count because you're actually 15 but i'm just like if you took a snapshot of me at my most stressful time at 16 oh my god like i'm sure none of us would be pleasant people but yeah. it's like, I think you have to go on that journey of like, why is he like this? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. to eventually find who he really is. So like, nah, I, I welcome it. I'm a fan of it. Yeah. I don't. He's, I, he's I, just I a little misunderstood right now. Right. And that's it's not like it's not yeah. real, you know? Yeah. Right. Especially growing up mm-hmm. in such white spaces. You know, I grew up in white suburbia in Texas. Like, that's not uncommon, mm-hmm. you know? And you just kind of. And then also just people are surviving. Like, how do you mm-hmm. how do you survive and try and thrive? You know, if you're going to go against the grain of the rich Bel Air, you know, we're, we're in similar positions where we've just been in that all our lives. You know, Lisa and Carlton. And so it's just like, you know what? We gotta we gotta navigate our own way. And so I, I think, yes, judge because that's what we do. But also, I would just leave the door open. You know, like for just like everything. I hear you on that. I cannot wait to see where things go with all of these characters. Uh, it, it, this uh, this reimagining of this entire story has been really compelling. And uh, you definitely have a fan in me. I know a lot of fans here uh, from these students as well. So congratulations to you guys on the show. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for um, today's conversation. So uh, thanks to our special guests, Ali, uh, Ali, Akira, and Simone. And thanks to all of you at home for joining us, all of the students for their questions. Really appreciate it. Stick around for more SCAD TV Fest, the leading television festival in higher education. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah.